All right, well, good morning. It's Councillor Glenn. It is Saturday morning. I'm just putting my gloves on here. It is a little warmer than last week. Another beautiful, sunny Saturday. I'm on Brigantine Avenue, the corner of Brigantine and Camzin, and I'm here for a reason. I'll tell you about that in a sec. But um, I wanted to share some good news with you. First of all, as of yesterday, all of Ottawa's long-term care homes, I believe there's 28 long-term care homes, uh, they have all the residents have received their second dose, so that's good news. The other good news is uh, Ottawa got a shipment of the Moderna vaccine, enough to vaccinate uh, 4,000 people with their first shot. So that's gonna happen at, um, at uh, high priority retirement homes. So uh, we are getting vaccines, and as soon as we get them in Ottawa, we're out there putting those shots in people's arms and getting people vaccinated. So this is this is really good news. The other thing is, uh, I think on Monday or Tuesday, we're gonna get an update from the provincial government about the status of the shutdown. Uh, I believe it's set to be lifted on February 11th. So we're gonna find out whether it's gonna be lifted or continued. A couple weeks ago at city council, um, I supported some of my colleagues in a motion calling on the provincial government to allow small businesses to reopen safely with the same capacities as big box stores. So if Costco is allowed to open with 25% capacity, and uh, we believe that small businesses in our community should be able to do the same thing, obviously with physical distancing, hand sanitizing, and so on. Um, but I think it's uh, really the fair thing to do for businesses at this point. All right, so your local updates today. I'm here on Brigantine. We had a public meeting the other night. You can check out my website at glengower.ca. You can watch the meeting and read a recap. Um, this is an old stormwater management pond. It's been here for about 10 years or so. It's always been part of the plan that eventually this stormwater pond would be filled in. It's a temporary pond. There's some new infrastructure to handle storm watering further east of here in a subdivision that Richcraft is going to be building in the next couple of years. So the plan has always been to fill this in. But what's changed is since the homeowners here purchased their home, Madame's plan for what they would build here has changed. Originally, Madame was looking at building some single homes, some detached homes, and now they want to build uh, townhomes here. And um, it's it's causing uh, a lot of uh, a lot of co uh, consternation, a lot of anger. Let's keep it simple. A lot of anger for residents, which I do understand. It's always been zoned for townhomes. So townhomes have always been allowed. But when people went into that showroom uh, with Madame a decade ago, they would have seen a map that, that showed future singles uh, rather than townhomes. And it's something that I see happening a lot in new neighborhoods is you go into a showroom and it's a, a fancy map and it shows a school site here and it shows a park here and it, it shows potential future commercial development here. And the reality of what happens as, as neighborhoods grow and develop, especially in these multi-phase developments that might take 15 or 20 years to build, these things change. And, and I think that's a problem and it's something I've been talking to some of the builders about. And I think we need to create um, some more resources, first of all, to help homeowners ask the right questions. And second, to uh, uh, better train the salespeople in the homes and, and some proactive disclosure about what could be possible. With planning and neighborhood growth, change is always possible, but I think uh, we need to have people be a little more upfront. Uh, I a little upfront about, uh, more upfront, more open about what the possibilities are. For example, a school site, you might see a site on a map that says school site. Maybe you buy a home right in the neighborhood to have your kids walk to school. It could be, uh, well, schools have a seven year window to exercise their option on that school site. After that, often these sites are dual zoned. So if the schools don't take their option in seven years, uh, you could have townhomes built on the site or singles on the site. Um, in fact, something similar has happened in, in Fairwinds where there's two school sites, one of them on Parleville, where it's been over a decade. Uh, that may never be developed as a school. There's another one over on Rose Hill at Santa Lina. Uh, it's been a few years, so still within that seven year window, but it's not certain that that will be developed as a school. I don't think these things are, are ever really clear for people who are buying homes. And right now, when people are buying homes, there's such a rush to uh, just put your money down, the, the supply it goes so quickly that I don't think people always have the time to look into these things. Anyways, if you do have questions about this, call me, call my office. You can also call 311 and ask to talk to a development information officer, a DIO. Uh, they're people who uh, are basically resources. They can tell you all about what the uh, potential zoning and potential changes could be to your neighborhood. Um, man, I've, I've got so much I want to tell you about, but not a lot of time. Um, official plan, 
In case you didn't know this, uh, uh, next week, uh, well, this Wednesday, four days from now, City Council, uh, we are going to be looking at uh, recommended areas for future urban expansion. I should probably move off the road because there's cars come here. Uh, recommended areas for future urban expansion. Um, there are some locations in Stittsville that are, uh, that are being proposed at the south end near the Traditions in Edenwild, Edenwild neighborhood and also uh, a little bit west of the Timbermere neighborhood. Uh, there was also a uh, consideration of some lands west of Westridge and Deer Run. Uh, thankfully, that is not on the list. Uh, I, I pushed, uh, pushed hard to make sure that uh, these would not be included in any future expansion. Uh, you might have heard this week about uh, the Taywin developments, the Taywin lands. This is a big parcel of land in the East End. Uh, it's been a lot in the news lately. Um, there's a lot we could talk about that. Uh, I don't think I can do it justice in this video. So I think what I'll do is I'll weigh in a little later this week about it and uh, maybe do another video or, or a blog post just to uh, set out some of the issues. The city is, is uh, proposing to work in a partnership with the Algonquins of Ontario to uh, build a new community in the East End. Um, what I'm concerned about is the risk. There's a lot of potential financial risk to the city. And our philosophy of the city is that growth should always pay for growth. New homes should be able to pay for themselves. And I really want to make sure that that's respected here because uh, there's some significant costs to bring uh, water and sewer and transit and all the other services that a new community needs. So I've been working with some of my council colleagues on making sure we have those uh, safeguards, those conditions in place before development can occur. The other thing that we're working on is a new gating policy. So basically this is putting conditions in place, stronger conditions in place for new communities so that when we approve new development that we actually have a plan to finance the infrastructure required. And I know you've all seen uh, what's happening here in Stittsville where, where the roads, the transit legs many years behind the development. We've got we've to get back on track and get that fixed. So that's something we're working on through this official plan process as well. Uh, this week we have City Council, we have a very long planning committee, there's no Stittsville files this week on planning committee. Uh, we have on Monday a Board of Health update, uh, so this will be an important one, obviously with COVID I sit on the Board of Health. Um, it's going to be a busy week. We also have a public meeting for the Stittsville Main Street development application. This is the one across from Quitters, right next to the Trans-Canada Trail. They're calling it The Station. If you haven't seen it yet, check out my website. And I think uh, on Facebook also, there's an event set up for that. We're gonna, be, we're gonna have the, uh, the, the builder, the owner, and the architect, and they're gonna share information about what they're planning and take questions from residents as well. So that should be a really interesting session. Um, I'm going to wrap it up there because that's uh, there's plenty more I could tell you. This is always kind of the tip of the iceberg of what's going on at City Hall. Uh, I have a couple more updates, but I'm going to save them for later in the week because uh, I don't want to pack too much information into one video. Thank you for watching. Uh, have a great day. I hope you get out, uh, check out your local rink, maybe go cross-country skiing, take a walk in the neighborhood. It's a gorgeous day out here, and I'll talk to you next Saturday.